Hi, everybody. My name is Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto, and I do total carbs, and my carbs are usually under 10 total carbs for the day. But finding your groove and what works for you is what matters. I don't recommend um, doing net carbs, though, especially if you're new, because I think that kind of gives a false sense of security that everything is going to be okay. Um, if you have a younger metabolism, maybe, but you're, if you're like me in your 60s, looking more towards 70 than you are towards 60, yeah, that net carbs is, is, is a tough one. So stop beating yourself up. Okay? Okay. I know. It's been, it's been for some a very rough month. December was tough on a lot of us. And we've got your back. We're going to be here. We're going to keep doing slow, consistent, turtle pace, keto, or carnivore, and just keep figuring it out. Hopefully by now, mid-January, you've got all of that um, trouble, <laughs> trouble as a noun, um, out of your house, and it's no longer looking at you. And uh, if you're like me, the Yankee in me wants to use everything and not throw it out. I, I've heard that. I remember times hearing that or reading that in comments where people say, well, I've got a house full of, you know, they don't call it sad. <laughs> they wait. It, they probably don't until they've been firmly ensconced in keto for a long time. And they say, you know, I don't want to waste it. And and so some people, not me, will say things like, you know, so you're going to keep poisoning your body because you don't want to waste that non-keto food? Oh, okay. I get that. I understand that because, you know, I got a lot of Yankee uh, single mom for many, many years in me where everything had to just be used and last. But today, it's just nice to be keto. It's just nice to have it under 10 total and I can wake up and go about my day. The bones of my food are put into the chronometer and I am good to go. I I have everything in by the time I sit down to eat. And um, yeah, last night I had a wonderful meal. And I thought I was uh, <laughs> thought I was recording it. And I I turned it on and I set it up and I talked for my you know usual 50 to 60 seconds. And then I turned it off. But really what I did was turn it on. <laughs> No video on what I ate, and it was a great portrayal. I had a salad with some um, extra uh, raw veggies in it, some celery, 20 grams, and uh, some organic English cucumber, 40 grams. And then I had uh, spare ribs and the prime rib rib that was left over, and it was delicious. And I thought it would be a great video, and oh well. Some of the best lay, laid plans from me. And I look over here and I see, oh, yes, I am recording now. Thank you. <laughs> so a lot of people uh, fell off of the keto train. And fortunately, there are enough cars on the keto train that you can run along by the side of it because keto is slow like a turtle. And you can find that little stair step, grab it and come back on. Unless you've slipped and fallen and have had trouble and struggles coming back on, you have no idea what a struggle it is to get back to where you were. That groove is hard. It's hard. Um, in AA, they're called often retreads. And sometimes retreads are the best people to listen to because they did fall off the keto train and they are struggling to get back. And it might not be that, okay, I've fallen and now I'm back and everything and they lived happily ever after. No, it doesn't always happen that way. So sometimes coming back on, we'll have some, some, there goes my, again, some slow, some starts and stops that get you. And, and it's discouraging because you wonder if you will ever, ever have that day-to-day-to-day -to -day -to -day consistency back. Nibbling does that. Snacking does that. Cheating does that. Treating does that. All of those 
little side things play into your 100% resolve. I said that a few times leading up to um, the Christmas food uh, danger place, that it's really easy to do keto at 100%. To, to kind of think that you can have other things along with your keto and not make your keto 100%, it, it, it's not easy to do. There, it's too much play in your head. And if you've been there, done that, and have a certificate, a hat, and a t-shirt all to prove it, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't had that happen, bravo. Good for you. Keep doing it. You're a power of example when you get up and you do what you have to do. And it doesn't mean tracking, weighing, measuring. <clears throat> what it means is that at the best optimum time of your food addiction or just overweight journey to losing or being on meds and wanting to give them up, in that time frame, you had good, solid momentum. You know, it doesn't mean that you have to jump back on and do crazy, crazy things like people that would join the gym and go, you know, two or three times a day, work out at home, play the tapes, have the Fitbit, go absolutely crazy thinking they can chase down the weight they've gained with exercise. But those of us that have some wisdom and have some time here in keto, we know that it's what you eat, not what you're trying to exercise off. Yes, if you've slipped and fallen and you're, you know, a mess, just a puddle of mess, I, maybe walking would help, at least it's distracting, and you put somebody's good podcast in your ears as you watch to try to get it back, whatever it takes, and we're all different, but um, I've been fortunate since I've been keto to not stray. I love the custodian at the, uh, at the jail. He always says, come on, Sarah, you've had some sugar or some bread or something, haven't you? And it's like, no, I have said all along that my version of my keto pizza, which is the fathead dough with the almond flour cut in half, cut in half, and different cheeses and meats on top has been what has saved me. It has saved me from thinking I, I want a sweet treat. I don't. And it has saved me from thinking that a carb garbage item will work and that I can back myself up, have that, and then jump right back on that keto train that, like I said, has a lot of cars to it. So I can rush up and grab onto that stair um, handle thing. I, uh, I just feel for the people that are struggling to come back. It's, it's a bear. It's not easy. Um, and so, I don't know. I feel I've been blessed. I know that doing a video every day keeps me pretty darn um, uh, accountable. To all of you and I I like what I'm eating I like what I'm doing it it just works for me but it begins with that one dangerous bite one bite is too much and a thousand isn't enough I know because I was I was just a pig eater out of the gate I knew no limits I would go you know like say I was at somebody's house and they had all kinds of things that were carby, I would, I would just, <laughs> it's almost like I brought my own containers, right? And I just like, just loaded it up, one with carby main course things, one with the sugary carby desserts, and I would go home and I would just continue because, I, you know, I didn't want to look like the pig eater that I was. And I would just get home, put on my jams, of course, because they stretched along with the, you know, bloated belly, and just go for it. And you know, think that I would be in safe territory the next day. It doesn't happen that way. There's guilt, there's remorse, there's shame, there's the sugar in your head, in your body saying, more, I want more. And you could be in trouble. It's hard. Um, I was very blessed to get new clients a couple of days after Christmas and um, it's continuing because they see, they see that like, I just need a little bit of a help. I need those hands behind me on my shoulders, looking at what I'm having, weighing and measuring, just the way that I say to get back on track doesn't mean that you have to do it. But the people that come to me as clients for that little gentle coaching, 
they know how I do it. They know it's going to be that strict and disciplined. When they put something on their chronometer, I can see it. And a lot of them have their own little recipes. I can't see the ingredients in their recipe on chronometer, but, you know, I can see, like, if they've named it something, like I name my keto pizza, I name my leftover stew, things like that. In the recipe section, that's where you can see the ingredients. But I can see what they're having, and they know what they're doing. You know, after a while, that groove happens. They have they have eggs done a certain way so they can put their name with their scramble. They have their coffee a certain way. And I probably questioned them in the beginning of their journey with me. So I know that it's a keto-based, you know, low-carb item that's in their recipe section of their chron chronometer. I'm not for everybody. I'm just for those people that understand the behavior and the habits. To me, oh, I have a little I have a little asthma whistle, whistle going. <laughs> Did you hear that? Sounds like it's spring with the birds. So I, <laughs> um, or chirp, chirp. So, uh, you know, we just get into the groove together and their products that they're choosing get to be healthier. There's better bad choices that we could be working on, which is another habit, you know, like the gum or the diet soda or the artificial packets. We do what we do. And it's, it's, landmark in our own personal journey. You know, like when I tell my coffee mate story, I thought I would never, ever, ever give it up. I thought I'd never, ever, ever give up gum. Um, diet soda wasn't one of my issues and artificial sweeteners weren't one of my issue issues. But, you know, we all have what we know as little places that they're, they're better bad choices and then they become the crutch and then somebody comes along and kicks that crutch crutch from under your arm and you have to learn how to walk again in your keto journey with safety in mind. And and it just it's just what works for a lot of us. But if you do it in a different way, or perhaps this this January was the um, time you decided to do carnivore for the first time, that's another great thing. So we do what we do and we always want to do it a little bit better. But going to sleep at night and resting your head on the pillow with keto abstinence or carnivore abstinence, there is nothing else like it. Cutting corners and, and um, nibbling and snacking and, you know, grabbing little cheaty things, it's only on you. And you don't, I know you don't want to do that. It's just, how do I stop? How do I stop? For me, cold turkey has always worked better than weaning weaning really didn't work. I weaned the gum and that was, that worked. Um, but it was cold turkey from the coffee mate, cold turkey from smoking, cold turkey from drinking, cold turkey from sugars and grains. That wonderful August five or six years ago now, when I gave up the sugars and the grains, thank you, William Davis. It's not like I'm a follower of hers, his now. I just know that he was very, very key and some people that I've met along the keto road that were gods, little g, in my head, the professionals that were doing things that kept me going at that time, even some of them have, have um, veered off into the land of supplements and products, and so they don't hold as much weight. I believe in keto, real food. No fruits, no artificial sweeteners, no diet sodas, no sugars, no grains of any kind, and no seed oil. So I've got like six little things that I can avoid. And the rest of the world is my oyster. And I'm a pearl, Sarah Pearl. So that all works for me. I've got a fatty chuck roast in the oven right now, cooking my little pot roast. I'm excited. And um, that'll, that'll serve Greg and me for two meals. And then the, the leftover beef I shred and I put with some cauliflower, kind of mushy, and some Brussels sprouts, kind of mushy, and some organic beef broth. And that turns into my, what I call, leftover stew. And I will have that one night as well. So there's plenty of wonderful keto foods available in my fridge. And that's how I like it. That makes me hum. That makes me purr like my kitties. I love having things available and um, not having the crap call to me. 
If you stop eating sugar, you will find cravings will go away. Isn't that something? If you stop ketofying your desserts, I bet that will go away too. You know, the sugar, even maybe it's the addiction to sweet, not just sugar. Think about that if you're a keto fire. So this has been Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto. And today I'm pretty sure it's under 10, usually is. And um, uh, it's already in, I just didn't pull it up. And if you need that one-on-one -on -one and doing something like weighing, measuring, chronometer, bad habits, better bad choices, um, behaviors, as well as picking better choices of food is something that might work for you. You can find me at ketocoachingsarah.com. It's not a meal plan thing. It's not a group rah-rah thing. It's you and me working on your choices, maybe going from three meals a day to two meals a day or two meals a day to one meal a day. Just those little tweaks that we do one day. And maybe, maybe I'll try it a second day. Maybe there's a third. And then maybe that's your new way of eating. You never know. I will see you the next time here on Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto, under 20. My name is Sarah. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye for now.